Hello, uh, today I want to look at a fundamental area of accounting that will come up on all of your IFRS based subjects. It'll also come up on financial management subjects, but really I'm thinking about this in terms of IFRS, not financial management. So we're going to talk about discounting and unwinding. So this is something that confuses students all the time and it really isn't anything to be confused about. So what are we asking here? Well, the first thing we're saying is when do you discount something? Well, you discount something if you've got an amount to pay and it's in the future. Now I'm talking about more than a year away. So you have basically a liability, something you're going to have to pay in more than a year. So what does that mean? That means that if we receive that amount in a year, it's not worth the same in today's terms because of number one, inflation, and number two, the risk that you might not get the money at all. So what do we do to deal with that? Well, we discount the amount and that makes it smaller. So we can see we've got a smaller star here because the amount's been discounted we're going to bring it in at a smaller amount. So we discount it. And I'll show you how exactly to do that in a second. Now, once you've worked out how much the discounting is, well, that means you can create your liability for this amount you're going to pay in the future. So you debit the item, whatever it is, and you credit a liability. And you do it with the discounted amount. Now that does cause a problem which we have to deal with. The problem being that you've now got a liability for a smaller amount than you're going to actually pay because you're bringing it in at the discounted amount. So what do we do to deal with that? Well, we unwind the discount. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. But what that does is it creates a charge to the P&L and increases the liability year by year. So we increase the liability up until the date that we have to pay it. Because what we did in this first step was we discounted it to make it smaller. And in the second step, we're unwinding it to make it bigger again. So the top tip here is to think of unwinding the discount as reversing the discounting that you did at the start. So what we've got here is an amount to pay in the future. We discount it and bring it in at a smaller amount. So it's a liability, something we're going to pay in the future, but it's at a smaller amount than we're actually going to pay. So in order to get it up to the amount we're actually going to pay, we reverse that discounting over the period of time until we pay it. That's called unwinding, but just think of that as reversing the discounting over a number of years. So to do that, we debit the P&L with a charge and credit the liability to increase it. And you do that by multiplying the liability by the discount rate. And I'll show you how to do that in an example in a second. The last thing I want to point out here is when you actually do this. So examples of when you will find this happening. You'll see it for an environmental provision, for example. Let's say you've got cleanup costs, that you're a mining company, you're going to clean up after the mine is finished in 25 years time. Then you estimate how much that will cost, you discount it back to today's value and unwind the discount over 25 years. Deferred consideration, that would be in our group accounting where we're going to pay an amount for a subsidiary in a number of years. Again, we bring that in at the discounted amount and then unwind the discounting until we paid it. Dismantling costs on an asset, for example, we bring those in at the discounted amount and then we unwind the discounting until we have to actually dismantle the asset. Revenue recognition, if we're going to receive an amount in a certain number of years, we bring it in at the discounted amount and then we unwind that discounting over a number of years. So you will see that in a lot of different areas here and it's really important and crucial that you understand how to do it. So let's look at one simple example of doing this. 
So this will clarify unwinding the discount. Now I'll use the example of paying 10,000 for a subsidiary in three years time. So this would come into your group accounting. That's deferred consideration. And the discount rate here is 10%. Now, a lot of the times you won't be given your discount tables, so you'll have to work out the discount factor yourself. So if you have to do that, you need to use this formula. 1 over 1 plus the discount rate to the power of n. Okay, And I know that looks confusing the first time you see it, but it's really not. We use the discount rate as a decimal. So the discount rate will be 0.1 in this instance. And N is the number of years until we have to actually pay whatever it is. So it'll be three in this instance. So filling that in, it will be one over one plus 0.1 is 1.1. So one over 1.1 to the power of three, because we said that n is three. And if you do that calculation in your calculator, you'll get 0 0.710. So how do we discount the 10,000? We multiply it by that discount factor. So 10,000 times 0 0.751 gives us 7,510. So that's the amount we bring this in at. We bring it in by debiting goodwill, so that would be our goodwill working with 7510, and creating a liability for 7510. Now, this is the point at which we have a problem, because we now have a liability for 7510, but we're actually going to pay 10,000. So the liability doesn't match the amount we're going to pay. And that's where our unwinding of the discount comes in. Remember, think of that as reversing the discount. So in subsequent years, we will unwind the discount like this. We create a little table. We have the year, the opening balance at the start of that year. We then unwind the balance by multiplying it by the discount rate, in this instance, 10%. We add that on and that gives us our closing balance. So in year one, for instance, we have our opening balance of 7510. So that's the amount we calculated as the discounted amount. And remember, we're looking at the liability here. So the opening balance on the liability, 7510. We unwind that by multiplying it by 10% and adding that on. So that gives us 8261 and do notice that the balance is now a step closer to being 10,000. It's also a step closer to being paid. So we're reversing the discount over a number of periods. We do it again in year two, starting with the 8261 times 10% and add it on to give us the closing balance. And finally, in year three, we do it again to get a final balance of 9996. Now, it isn't quite 10,000. That's just a slight rounding difference. So in the exam, don't worry if you don't quite get to 10,000. That's fine. That's close enough. So that's how we would unwind the discount. To clarify exactly the accounting treatment for that, this 7510, remember, comes from our discounted amount. So you calculate the discount factor, multiply it by the total amount you're going to pay, and that discounts it. So we create a liability with that discounted amount, the 7510. The unwinding, the 751 here, the accounting treatment for that is that we debit the P&L, remember that's with a finance charge, and we credit the liability, and we can see we're crediting the liability because the liability is increasing. So 7510 increases the liability. And then finally, just to note on this final balance, what happens to that? Well, of course, we're going to pay it. So that final balance, we'll remove the liability and credit cash with the amount we actually pay at the end. So look, it doesn't matter if it is an environmental provision, a dismantling cost, revenue recognition, or indeed deferred consideration like this. It's always treated in the same way. It's always done like this. 
So learn it, know it, and if you see anything in the exam that you're going to pay or receive in a number of years, discount it and unwind it in exactly this same way.